Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's here. Hey, what's going on guys? How we doing? Matt Antonelli here. So answering your questions, today's question is about Major League players. When they come down to minor league teams to rehab, what are the interactions like between that major league player and the minor league players? And so we're going to get into that today. I'm going to talk about a lot of players um, that I played with when I was in the minor leagues that came down um, to rehab, usually injured, some type of injury. Uh, I also had, I had to do it a couple times because uh, while well, I was injured, like every other day, and so I'll talk about my experience, um, and we'll just answer a bunch of those questions, okay? So first thing, I think the big thing, when a player gets injured, okay, and they're going to go down and they're going to rehab, um, first thing that kind of all major league players do is they buy food for the minor league guys, okay? Because the minor league guys, if you guys have watched, and girls have watched uh, my channel and watched our videos, you know that minor league food can sometimes be really, really bad, right? Peanut butter and jelly is considered like a gourmet meal in the minor leagues, and so the first thing that kind of happens is a major leaguer is going to buy food. Now they won't buy, they, sometimes they won't buy it every single day they're there. It depends how long they're there for. Um, but they're going to usually, especially at least on their last day before they head out, they're going to buy a nice meal. Um, so I wrote a, a couple players uh, down here. The, the player that did that the biggest and the best was Brian Giles. So when Brian Giles was with the Padres, he ended up coming down and rehabbing when I was in Lake Elsinore, California in high A ball. And he bought us food like every night. He was there, I think it felt like probably like three days or so. And he bought us like a, a unbelievable spread. A spread is just what they call the meal after the game. Every day. I remember one day he had, so there was an outback kind of close to our field. He had an out, he had outback come down. They had like grills, portable grills that they had outside cooking up our steaks and stuff. It was, uh, it was awesome. He did that. He picked a different restaurant each night and uh, it was great. And he was a super, super nice guy. Um, you know, a lot of people were asking me, you know, do they interact with the players? Are they friendly? Are they, do they sit off in the corner? It really just depends on the type of person. So a lot of times people just lump people together like a major league player acts like this. Um, but major league players are all different. They're people just like anyone else. So just like if you have a coworker, um, you know, certain people are going to be more outgoing, more talkative. Uh, some people might keep to themselves. It's the same exact thing with players. So um, Brian Giles was really kind of like a loose, uh, really, really funny guy. Liked to do pranks and liked to uh, have fun and that stuff. So he was like a big kid. Um, who else did we have? So we had um, Ryan Zimmerman when I was with the Nationals. Ryan Zimmerman came and rehabbed uh, down at AAA. I was in AAA with the Nationals, he came and rehabbed. He wasn't there for a very long time. Seemed like more of a quiet guy. He wasn't there for a, a, a while, so maybe that's why. Um, don't, I mean, I remember him talking a little bit, but seemed like a pretty reserved guy. Wasn't uh, like a crazy talker or anything like that, uh, but seemed like a nice guy. Uh, who else? Steven Strasburg. So he rehabbed when I was in AAA with the Nationals also. He was uh, pretty young at the time, and so the, the biggest thing I remember with him is he carried around, which at this time, this I'd never seen this before. I think it's more popular now. But he carried around like this briefcase looking thing. And it had, a, I think it was an Xbox in there. And so he would just carry it into the clubhouse. And then he would put it down on the table and pop it open. And there'd be an Xbox with a TV screen in there and a, and a controller. And he could play uh, video games. And I'd never seen that before. But uh, he liked to do that. And again, he seemed like a really, really nice guy. Wasn't there super long. I think he came in for... I think he only came in for one start, um, so he might have been in like two days just to get ready, and then and then did a start, and then he bounced out of there. Um, and then uh, and so for myself, when I got injured, I had to go and rehab at a couple different places. The first thing I had to do was when I broke my hand, uh, I spent the whole summer with uh, basically like our rookie ball team uh, in spring train in our, at our spring training complex. And so I was with them every day, mostly rehabbing. And then as I got closer to being able to play, I would go out and play with them um, and practice with them. I actually only lasted one game in my rehab game with rookie ball. I remember I got up, my wrist was still hurting me, but they're like, well, you got to, you got to give it a try. So I went out there and uh, I took one swing and I hit the ball and I was like, that's the worst pain I felt. <laughs> and that was it. I left after like the third inning. Uh, so I made it through like three innings. Um, but I spent a lot of days practicing with them. One thing that I kind of did, and this might have been because I knew I was going to be a coach 
and maybe a little bit of my personality, but I felt like I was spending a lot of time, like I was rehabbing and trying to get ready to play and I was working on my game, but I felt like I was coaching a lot. So when I went out to second base, um, I felt like I was giving instruction. I felt like one of the other coaches. Uh, also at this level, those players are really, really young. So we had you know, guys out of high school, we had uh, Latin players uh, that were super, super young, that were maybe like, I don't know, 17 years old, maybe even younger than that. And at the time I was, so this would have been in 2010. So I don't know, let's do the math real quick. That was 10 years ago. I'm 34, so I was like 24 years old. So I'm probably like eight, you know, seven, eight years older than these guys. So I felt like I did a lot of time kind of trying to help guys out in the cage, hitting. A lot of guys would ask me questions about stuff and uh, would try to help them with, uh, with hitting. Someone's going to write in the comment section, wrong guy to ask for hitting advice. Yes, I know. The other not so fun part, we can look at it either way, is it's kind of cool when you're a minor league player, you get to face you know, some big leaguers coming down and rehabbing with other teams. So my f in 2007, my first professional season, my first two games of that year, I had to face two big leaguers. I faced Bartolo Colon the first game of the year. Not a good way to start off your season, by the way. First professional full season, like, all right, let's get going here. I'm trying to get to the big leagues. All right, who are we facing today? Oh, you're facing Bartolo Colon. Beautiful. So Bartolo started, and uh, I let off the game, and he struck me out. And he was throwing these, I've said this once before in a video, he was throwing these two-seam fastballs that were, were going like this. And at the time, you have to remember, you know, I didn't have very many professional bats under my belt, so you're not used to seeing Bartolo Colon's two-seamer doing that. It was crazy. He struck me out the first two at bats. Actually, I think it was the only two at bats uh, that I faced him with that filthy two seamer. And uh, another interesting fact: so if someone hit a foul ball into the dugout, and we grabbed the ball, and there was a huge gouge in the ball. And guys thought that he was somehow cutting up the ball to get more run on his two seamer. I don't know if he was doing that. It wouldn't make much sense to do that in the minor leagues. Um, but it was interesting because it moved, it moved like something was going on with that ball. I'd never seen that before. And then the next game was uh, Jared Weaver was throwing. Uh, so we're playing Rancho Cucamonga. We're playing the Angels. So both guys were with the Angels at the time. Uh, so Jared Weaver started. And he was tough to hit. He was like this big old dude that would stride across his body and throw back. And um, he was tough also. I, I remember those two games vividly. I remember I was, I think I was over two or three against Weaver, but I hit a hard ground ball, a hard like one bounce ground ball right down the line. Third baseman made a diving stop and threw me out. I was pretty upset about that. Um, but the one cool thing about that is that you do get to face, you know, if I had never got to the major leagues, that was really going to be my only opportunity to face major leaguers, to be able to face Bartolo Colon and Jared Weaver. So that's always exciting, except it typically hurts your batting average. Um, who else did I have to do that against when I was young? Uh, Tim Hudson. Tim Hudson was uh, rehabbing with the Braves and got to face him. Same thing. The biggest thing, this is the biggest thing I noticed in the minor leagues, especially when you're facing those guys, is the amount of movement on the ball. I remember with, like I said, with Cologne and then Tim Hudson. Tim Hudson was throwing these balls. looked like he wasn't even trying hard. And his ball was going like this. And I couldn't hit the freaking thing. It's unbelievable how much movement um, the ball had. It was, uh, it was something, again, that I hadn't really seen very much of. You're, you're used to seeing guys throw hard, but you're not always used to seeing guys with the ability to throw a, a, a two-seamer or a sinker that can really, really move. Who else did I face? Uh, Chris Carpenter. Chris Carpenter back when he was, uh, who is he, with the Cardinals? Uh, I believe it was the Cardinals. So he was another veteran guy that I faced in the minor leagues. And I'm sure there were more, but those were the guys that came to mind. So that was always fun. Um, so that's kind of how it works. Again, it really depends on the type of person. But I've always, I've never really been around a major league guy that's come down and has been a jerk. I, I, I was thinking through it and I can't remember anyone. Like everyone seemed to be pretty good. Some people are more talkative than others. But nobody comes in and is like, you know, pick up my laundry rook or anything like that. Like nobody's, nobody's Jack Parkman. Um, nobody's asking how's your wife and my kids. Nobody's doing that. None of the big leaguers in my experience. So that's all we got. Hopefully that answers your question. Thanks for uh, sending it in. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to hit the notification bell. Thank you to our patrons supporting our channel. We really appreciate that on Patreon. You guys have been doing awesome. And uh, that's all I got. We'll talk to you later.